So, you've got a Queen Anne, but you are unsure on what you have to do next. Well, let's learn how to raise a Queen into a thriving colony. To raise a Queen Anne, obviously the first thing you will need is a Queen Anne. They are the heart and soul of the ant colony, as when they die, it is essentially the beginning of the end for the colony, since she is the only one who can lay fertilised eggs to produce new workers. I have already covered how to catch a queen in this video, so be sure to go back and check out that video for some useful tips. In the wild, after their nuptial flights, queens will dig down and make what is called a founding chamber to start their colony. That's why in ant keeping, everyone uses a test tube setup, which is made by filling a test tube with around 50% of water, then plugging it off with a few bits of cotton, like this. This is done because it replicates the requirements of what they would have in the wild, as the queens can drink through the cotton to get their water, and this water will also provide the ants with the correct humidity. The test tube should also be placed in the dark as this would be the case in the wild as well. From this point onward, most ants would stay in this founding stage until they have their first generation of workers. It is also important to remember to clean all equipment thoroughly when setting up test tubes, as this will prevent any mold from forming. As personally, I have lost hundreds of dollars worth of queens by making this mistake. And if you are ever faced with this issue of mould, then be sure to check out this video on the channel as it will teach you how to move your queen into another test tube setup. Now, you must also do some research on the species you are keeping, as some species of queens are semi-colostral, like these bullants and Rotopranera metalloqueens, for example. This will mean they need to eat food during the founding stage. Therefore, they will most likely need an outworld or a foraging area like this. Here are a few tips to help your queens out during the founding stage. Don't check up on them too much as this will ensure they are relaxed, which will result in them being more likely to lay eggs as they will feel comfortable. Personally, I wouldn't worry too much if your queen isn't laying, because some of my queens have only started laying recently after keeping them for over six months. This may be likely due to the warm weather of springtime that is currently taking place here in Australia. And while we're on the topic of temperature, it is also important to keep it consistent as rapid changes can be harmful to your ants. I would typically try to keep them at 20 degrees and above. Another important thing to remember is that ant keeping can be extremely frustrating at times and often requires a lot of patience to grow a colony. And sometimes queens can just unexpectedly die with no real explanation. So be sure to stick at it and don't be discouraged if this happens to you. As personally, it can be quite frustrating if everything goes well, then you should end up with some workers after a couple of months, depending on the species of course. If your ants have made it this far, it is such an incredible sight to see in ant keeping, and is personally one of the reasons why I keep ants, as all the queen's hard work has finally paid off. However, this is only the start, and to keep your ants healthy, the ants will require a well-balanced diet of both carbohydrates and protein rich foods, like this honey and mealworms for example. I would recommend buying the mealworms or crickets for example from a pet store to ensure they are safe to consume for your ants. And if not, be careful with feeding ants other insects from outdoors as they may be carrying diseases which could wipe out an entire colony. After filling the test tube with workers, the colony will then be required to be put in an outworld which could either be accompanied with a nest like this, or you could do a tubs and tube setup like this Mamesia piriformis queen is in. You may also like to opt for a naturalistic form aquarium once the colony becomes large. And well, 
personally, I have plans to make a massive one in the future, which will store, hopefully, multiple species. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when that comes out. Whatever setup you choose, be sure to place some escape-proof fluoron on the edges so the ants can't escape. And there you have it. That's about everything you need to know on raising a queen ant and colony. Please give this video a like and let me know in the comments if you need any further help on raising your queen ant. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.